This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So, having gone through and looked at the group statement of financial position, which, even though a lot of it was revision from financial accounting, was very challenging, wasn't it? And, and the group statement of financial position question is, is usually one of the more difficult ones uh, to initially get used to and master. But if you practice plenty of the questions, because of the technique, because of the approach, uh, you can score quite well upon it. When we move on to the group statement of profit or loss, it gets a little bit more straightforward because the same rules, the same principles apply. By that, we mean we're looking at control and ownership. So if the parent has control over the subsidiary, we are going to consolidate the revenues and the costs 100% line by line by line. However, the parent may not own all of the subsidiary, so therefore they will need to go through and show the share of the subsidiary's profits for the year that they do not own. Uh, the share of the profits that they do not own is what belongs to the non-controlling interest. So once we've consolidated the revenues, the costs and the profit, we will then need to show the non-controlling interest. So what of that profit for the year belongs to the NCI and then what else belongs then to the owners of the parent? So let's just go through and do a little bit of revision from the days of financial accounting uh, and have a look here whereby we are asked to go through and prepare the consolidated statement of profit or loss for the 31st of May X6. So Keswick owns 80% of the share capital uh, of Derwent. So Keswick is the parent, Derwent is the subsidiary. Uh, and it's there we acquired it on the 1st of June X5. If we have a year end of May X6, then that is the very start of the accounting period. So therefore, we're going to consolidate all of the results of Derwent, the subsidiary, for the full 12 months, that there is no mid-year acquisition just yet. Uh, the summarised draft statement of profit or loss for Keswick and Derwent for the year ended May 20x6 is shown below. Okay, uh, so you've got revenue right the way down there. Is it to your profit for the year? Okay, so what we're going to go through and do is we're going to consolidate on a line by line basis so group statement of profit or loss uh, and we're just going to use bracketed workings for now you will see that that is not what we use in the exam uh, that's 100% of P, and that's 100% of S, isn't it? The 8400 and the 3200. Uh, we then have, is it my cost of sales? For 600 and 1700. 5, 6,000. 300. Giving me five thousand three hundred as my gross profit. Uh, I've then got my operating expenses. With that two two hundred the parent. And 960 of the sub. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? Oh, that's getting too complicated for me. Out comes the calculator. Does that give me there? Is it 3,160? Does that then give me 2,140? As my profits before tax. 
Uh, I've then got tax is at the 600 and 140. So I can then take my tax. Did we say that was 600 of the parent? 140 of the subsidiary. So that gives me 740. So does that give me there 1400 as my group profit for the year? Being 100% of the parent, 100% of the subsidiary. That's everything above there is demonstrating what we control. Okay. Below that is whereby we go through and demonstrate ownership. What do we actually own? As the parent of that 1,400, what's attributable to the owners of the parent and what's attributable to the non-controlling interest? So we've got the attributable to the owners of the parent and attributable to the NCI. Okay. Uh, remember how we work it. We take the non-controlling interest percentage, which I think is 20, and multiply it by S's profit for the year. So we've consolidated all of the 400. We don't own all of it, do we? We only own 80% as the parent. So 20% of that belongs to the non-controlling interest. So is that 20% of 400? Which I think gives me 80, doesn't it? What then belongs to the parent? Well, the rest. Okay, of that 1,400, 80 belongs to the non-controlling interest. And therefore, 1,320 belongs to the parent. Okay, there we go. So here, just a reminder, the 20% is the NCI share. And then the 400 is S's profits for the year. And what we're doing here is that we are showing ownership. So that's very basic. Uh, that's very straightforward. There's nothing too difficult there, but it makes sure that we understand the fundamentals of a basic consolidation and demonstrate the principles of control by adding across 100% on a line by line basis. And then the other side being the ownership and what the non-controlling interest shareholders own of the subsidiary.